if you have a turbo car, guaranteed at some point in your career of racing or in one of your buddies' careers of racing, y'all have knocked a thrust bearing out of a motor. Oh my God, it is a huge issue. You talk to your engine builder, your engine builder goes, it's not my fault. Transmission guy, he goes, it's not my fault. Your torque converter guy, it's not my fault. And so everybody points their finger at everybody else and nobody really understands all the dynamics of what causes failure. There's a lot to it. This is gonna be a multi-part video. I'm just gonna talk about one aspect today um, and that's dealing with the thrust bearing itself. Um, the, the engine has a part to do with it, the torque converter has a part to do with it, and the transmission, they're all related. And it even comes down to, to user, who's installing it, if they're getting the correct spacing right. But I'm gonna talk about the thrust bearing itself today. So this is probably gonna end up being about a three-part video over the next uh, month or so as I'm rebuilding my car. I've had lots of thrust failures, and then we finally started figuring out what was happening, what was going on, and we made it a lot better. And so uh, I'm gonna share that with you guys, and hopefully it can, it can solve a little bit of your pain and make it a little easier for you guys. All right, check this out. So this is the thrust bearing that I just took out of my car. So this is the um, the one that goes, this is the upper one, this is the one that goes into block. Um, and you can see this is the part that's in the front. It is all nice and pretty and shiny and perfect. So of course it's in great shape. Um, the, the crankshaft is pushing from the back. It's getting pushed from the back by the torque converter and it's just like a hydraulic ram essentially. So it's pushing regardless of how everything is set up. And how much it pushes determines, you know, what kind of wear and tear you get on this this bearing. So typically, when you when you have this thing, the thrust bearings in there, and this is the part that's back toward the back. And you see, it's got a, it's got a little bit of wear on it, but it is not in bad shape at all. This thing is actually in pretty good shape. Um, so typically, the the bearing, the thrust surface on the on the crankshaft, it only gets oil that is squeezed out. So it comes in through the main hole here, goes through the 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 groove. And then that's your lubrication. And the oil that is squeezed out, that's what drips down and, and goes down to the, to the thrust surface. So what we do, um, there's a couple of ways you can accomplish this, but the easiest way is I go on this parting line right here. And this is, you know, it comes up, it's on the, on, this is the part that goes back toward the rear of the motor. And you can see it looks a little funny. It's gonna be hard to get it on video, probably. I'm gonna turn it slow and see if you can see it. Mm, it's very difficult, but if you can, I'm gonna try, um, there you go, this is zooming in okay. But I take a die grinder with a um, carbide cutter with one of the square chiseled ends. And basically what I do is I make it about 50 thousandths wide and I just slightly groove it and then i go down about 20 or 30 thousandths so now what's going to happen when the oil comes up through this hole it's going to come up this passage and then where the cap hits the the oil oil is i mean it's a fluid so it's lazy it's going to take the path of least resistance just like electricity so it's going to come up and then that fluid is going to come down this cap and so now we're going to have a much better supply of oil to that that thrust surface and you know i don't do it to the front i mean because the front typically doesn't have a problem um you know just because of the like i said the crank doesn't push that way so you know cutting this groove right here being careful deburring it um you know you don't want to make it too big you don't want to make it um too small it's trial and error but typically i'll take my micrometer and i'll mic out about fifty thousandths and i'll just score it and so when I score it across here, I mean, that gives me my mark. And then I just, you know, put on my safety glasses sometimes. Sometimes I don't. <laughs> and then I, I just lightly, you know, cut on it until I get it the way I want it. And it's pretty easy to do. And it's pretty, pretty neat, pretty, pretty simple. Now I have also heard, which I have not done, 
But this oil galley right here in the block, you can find it coming from the back surface. You could drill through the, the rear main um, seal area and then just you'd have to you know tap it with a pipe tap, like an 8 32nd tap or 10 32nd. But you can drill through the bearing and then through the block and then get direct oiling to this surface as well. Um, I've been doing this and ever since I've done this and I also, I'm, I mean, this is, you know, going to be your engine builder. Um, I loosen the, I like to have the, the clearance on the, the thrust a little looser on the higher end of the spec. Um, you know, a lot of people run them really, really tight, but there again, if it's really, really tight, you don't have a chance for a lot of oil to get in there. So I like to run it a little looser, um, you know, 12, 14 thousandths. It seems like the more clearance I have in mind, you know, the better. Now I do run a real thick oil. Um, so a thicker oil is going to, you know, make a difference on that as well. I mean, I run a, a 20W50 usually, or either a straight 50. So, um, you know, that's gonna make a difference. If you're running a real lightweight oil, I mean, clearly if you have a lot of clearance, that's gonna be a problem. The oil is gonna be escaping faster than, you know, it can get put in there. But anyway, this is a little trick to the bearing. Um, you know, if you've got a normal thrust bearing, now, if you have a race engine now, there are some tricks also. I mean, you know, a lot of the, the big engine builders, the big engine shops, so they machine the front cap and the front of the block. So basically they put a Torrington bearing on it. And so it pushes on the front of the block. It's a roller thrust bearing. And so the, you know, the bigger machine shops, they, were, they started doing that several years back. And, you know, so if you're, if you're in the, if you're getting a, a Hemi or a 481X or, you know, I think, um, you know, I'm sure TKM can do it as well. The, uh, the, a lot of the bigger shops, they're able to machine the block down and then you put spacers on the front of the crank on the, the snout of the crank, basically just behind like where the, um, the, the counterweight, it's just in front of the counterweight, the front counterweight. It's kind of hard to describe. But um, that's what pushes against the cap and the block. And they have real good luck with that. This is what the roller thrust bearing looks like. And when they machine the crankshaft and the block, it fits in that gap and you adjust it with shims. You know, but one of the things we had uh, when we were killing thrust bearings more than anything, um, you know, this will go back into, you know, the next parts. You know, co converter technology has come a long ways and being able to um, have a have a torque converter that is very loose to spool up, um, you know, or if you got dump valves on it um, and then being tight enough down track. Back in the day, I mean, you know, we really struggled with the torque converters because if we got it loose enough to make it spool up quickly, then it would blow through it on the top end. And so, you know, we couldn't get any mile per hour ET out the back. So, you know, that was very problematic. But, um, so a lot of stuff's changed, of course, over the years, but this is just something you can do to your bearing, help a little bit of oil supply, um, you know, to that thrust surface, um, making sure that, uh, you know, it gets plenty of oil is, you know, what I do and it seems to work. And um, like I said, there's, there's proof right there on, on how, that, how good that bearing looks. I mean, it's a little bit discolored, but there is no, there is zero offset on that and that could be the the difference in the color there it doesn't even look like it's it's really uh rubbing out this way it looks like it's um possibly the the bearing i mean the thrust surface on the crank is just a little bit smaller it doesn't go all the way out to the edge and you see on the front there's practically nowhere on the front either but there goes your, your proof there and it's and this bearing i mean i don't know why it got discolored or even, even the inside there is colored and that stuff is not really coming off um but anyway, just some, some tips, uh, tidbits. You know, if you're not doing this to your, your thrust bearing, um, you know, and it works on a small block forward, it works on any type of motor that has this type of bearing. If you have one of those mod motors where the, the thrust bearing is separate, I hadn't messed with a mod motor, but I know Brian was struggling with it um, for a while. Yeah, I know MMR sells a, a roller thrust kit. But any traditional bearing, you can do this too. And I don't know that I, I mean, if I had a natural aspirated car, I mean, I might would even consider doing this. I mean, it just helps, um, you know, and it just, it just makes it, it just makes it better, you know, when you get more oil, in my opinion. If you got any comments, just drop them below. Don't forget to like, share, and comment, and subscribe if you're not. And we'll see you next time.
Go fast and get some wind lights.